Hi, I'm Peyton with Shoshone Adventure Consulting, and welcome to part two of our continuing series on frequently asked questions by first-time safari goers. This time, we are coming at you live from Cruz of Safaris. Uh, it's kind of in between Tambazimbi and Lefalali up in the Limpopo in South Africa. I've been hunting with crews of safaris for years. In fact, I did my first safari in South Africa over 20 years ago, right here with crews of safaris, and the place only gets better. I couldn't think of a better backdrop to talk about another set of frequently asked questions than at this, well, this hunting paradise. The first thing that I wanna talk about is traveling with the child and what customs is gonna look like when you arrive at OR Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg. If you're traveling with a child on your safari or on your photo safari, and when you arrive in South Africa, you might be asked by the customs official for certain paperwork depending on if you're a single parent traveling with the child or a family traveling with a child. For example, my wife and I brought two of our kids on this trip that we're, we're hunting on right now. I brought my kids' birth certificates, which names on their birth certificate match the names on their passport. When we went through customs, they didn't blink an eye about anything. They just stamped our passports and away we went. However, they could have asked us for our birth certificates or for our kids' birth certificates to make sure that the names on the birth certificates match the names on the passport. You know, they're trying to keep people from smuggling children in and out of the country, which I get, but you just have to be prepared for it. If you are a single parent traveling with a child, and I don't mean single like you're divorced traveling with a child, father-son hunt, father-daughter hunt, you need to make sure that you have the paperwork that South Africa Customs needs um, that has, uh, it's basically, it's almost like a permission slip from the other parent that you're allowed to enter with that child into South Africa. If you have custody paperwork, if you're traveling with a stepchild and that child's name on their birth certificate does not match the name on their passport because maybe they've taken your name or something like that, you need to have that custody paperwork with you. This is not a big deal, and I just tell people to be over-prepared versus under-prepared. On this trip that we're traveling on right now, one of the families uh, is in that exact situation. There's a, a stepchild involved. The name on the birth certificate does not match um, the name on um, current custody paperwork. They brought everything with them just in case, and you know what? They didn't need to show any of it, but you know what? They were over-prepared versus under-prepared. Just check out the South Africa customs page before you enter the country to make sure you have the up-to-date forms for children entering South Africa. Really, no matter where you hunt in Southern Africa, with a few exceptions, you're gonna end up at the big airport in Johannesburg. It's not intimidating, it's very easy to get through. When you arrive in the international terminal, you're gonna walk into the big customs hall. There's one line to the left for uh, residents of South Africa that hold South Africa passports. And if you keep walking straight ahead, there's another line for international travel. Now, you can go to the right or to the left at that point and just follow the signage. But one of those signs points to countries that do not require a visa to enter South Africa. And that's the line that you want to enter. You're going to wind your way through the ropes. If you arrive on the Delta flight at about seven o'clock in the evening, or some of those other kind of busy time flights, that line can be quite long. If you arrive at three o'clock in the morning on the Qatar flight, say, there's really no one in line except people are on your flight. I've been there both ways and you just have to get through it. But you'll wind your way through the line until you come up to a booth with a customs officer there. Don't be surprised if they just stamp your passport and you're on your way that quickly. Sometimes they're carry on conversations with one another. Sometimes they ask you what you're doing in South Africa and just tell them I'm hunting or I'm on holiday. They might ask you if you're traveling with a firearm. And if you are, they might ask for your invitation letter from the safari outfitter that you're hunting with. This will already be supplied to you by the outfitter and you just show them that more than likely you're gonna be at that booth no longer than two or three minutes tops and you're gonna be on your way to baggage claim. Baggage claim is located just beyond the customs lines and there's several carousels and just like any other big airport, there'll be signs that say which uh, carousel to collect your flight's luggage from. Once you collect those, uh, collect your bags, you're just gonna keep walking down that arrivals hall uh, and eventually you're gonna, or the, you're just gonna keep on walking down the, uh, the customs hallway until you walk out into the arrivals terminal. The arrivals terminal is this really big area uh, with lots of shops, but it's where folks are gonna be standing there with signs with names on it. And that's where you're gonna meet your outfitter or somebody from a guest house that you might be staying with as well. You're gonna meet your representative there. If you traveled with a firearm, Hopefully you've hired the service of a 
uh, uh, somebody to help you with the firearms paperwork to get through customs. Your firearms are going to be located in the South Africa Police Service Office. Now that is located on the other side of the arrivals hall. So whoever you've hired to help you with your customs paperwork, whether it's Afton House or another place, they're going to walk you over to the police office. There'll probably uh, be a little bit line, there'll be a little bit of a line there with other hunters collecting their gun cases. They're going to open up your gun case. They'll look at your forms, make sure the rifle you brought matches your customs form 4457 and your uh, other paperwork that you have. It shouldn't take too long and you'll be on your way. The next thing I'd like to talk about is currency exchange. Whether or not you need to exchange any US dollars for RAND if you're going to be hunting in South Africa. All of your tips that you're going to be giving to your professional hunter and the cooking staff and the cleaning staff and trackers and skinners and all that, that should all be done in US dollars. However, if you're going to be spending a couple weeks in South Africa, it might be nice to pocket a little bit of RAND for those stops at the gas station or somewhere else. Now, pretty much everywhere you're going to be buying curios from, they take credit cards. But I always like to have a few RAND in my pocket just for quick stops at gas stations or if you buy some biltongs someplace, right? So if you want to exchange money, you can do that inside the arrivals terminal. You can actually do it right there by baggage claim. I usually do $100 or so. Right now, the exchange rate is around 18 or so Rand to a dollar. So you're going to pocket quite a bit of money and that should get you through the trip just to have some extra spending money in your pocket. Electricity. If you're traveling to South Africa to hunt, you are going to need a South Africa power converter before you arrive. Your outfitter might have some that people have left over the years, but don't count on that. You want to bring your own. You need to be real careful to purchase a power converter that is specifically made for South Africa. Do not trust just a universal power converter with a bunch of adapters. You need to get one that is specifically made for South Africa. You can get them now in power strips with USB ports and USB-C ports and everything else, as well as several power outlets. Uh, when I first started traveling here, you had to get like one adapter to go in the wall, another converter to plug into it. And in fact, I still have those same two power converters. My kids are using them on this trip for their cell phones. Back then we didn't have cell phones. But now my wife and I have uh, an actual power strip with some USB uh, ports on it, as well as just power connectors. But you need to purchase one that is specifically made for South Africa or for the country that you're gonna be hunting in. A lot of power converters for South Africa will also work in places like Zimbabwe, but just check with the outfitter wherever you're going to make sure that your South Africa power converter will work there or which power converter that you need. Really quick, I wanna talk about taxidermy. You basically have three choices when you come to Africa what you want done with your trophies. You can either have photographs taken of your trophies and decide not to bring anything back to the United States. And some people do that. They just don't wanna pay for it. They don't want the hassle of bringing it back. They don't have room left in their house. So they just take photos and they leave those here. The second thing you can do is just have your trophies dip and packed and then sent back to the United States. The dip and pack is just a term, meaning the veterinary process that animals have to go through before they're allowed to be exported and imported into the U.S. The, the hides have to be dried, salted, disinfected. Same thing with the horns and the skulls. Um, basically, they come folded up in a small crate. They're rock hard, you can't unfold them. You could sit them on a shelf in your garage probably for 10 years and they would be just fine. The third thing that you can have done is your taxidermy done in South Africa with a company like High Bell Taxidermist and then have those trophies shipped back. You just need to look at the quality of the taxidermy, what your expectations are, how much money you want to spend on shipping because while the taxidermy in South Africa will be cheaper than the taxidermy in the US, you might make up the difference in shipping costs because it's a bigger crate coming back. But those are the three options that you have. Daily rates versus hunting on a package. The daily rate is the price that you pay for your hunt. If your hunt daily rate is $400 a day, that covers your professional hunter, trackers, skinners, meals, lodging, beverages, alcohol usually, airport pickup. That is everything included in your daily rate. If you showed up to, to hunt here, let's say at Cruiser Safaris, and I decided not to shoot anything and just pay a daily rate, that's basically what I'm paying per day to have my hunt fully guided, to eat well, and do everything else. If you are hunting on a package deal, what outfitters will do is they will take the daily rate and they will take the trophy fees for animals that you want to shoot. They will usually reduce those fees by 10, 20% or whatever the case may be, wrap those up into one package to make it more attractive 
a lot of times for first time safari goers because they can hunt multiple species on their first trip or their second trip. So for example, for let's say $7,000, an outfitter might say, you can come hunt with me for seven days, fully included meals, lodging, alcohol, beverages, airport pickup, and that also includes the trophy fees for a kudu, a gims buck, maybe a diker, a steen buck, an impala or something like that. And they've lowered those rates. So really bang for your buck, it's not a bad deal. You just have to do the math to see if it's more advantageous for you and more economically right for you to hunt on a daily rate and pay a trophy fee versus hunting on a package deal. The more times that you come to a place like South Africa, you might end up hunting on a package deal your first couple times because it's like an open menu. You haven't shot anything yet, but the more times you come, you might be getting more selective and you're shooting more expensive animals. So you might find yourself hunting on a daily rate and only shooting one or two animals that you can't wrap up into a package deal.